Okay, I'm going to record on computer this time. Okay, recording now. Okay, and um, so I apologize. I think a few of you have sent me some messages privately. I haven't seen them all. I just got a few messages. So I'm saying hello. Um, welcome to class number three, which is crazy that three weeks has already gone by. Uh, it's kind of shocking. Well, not three weeks. This is the third week. Um, so give me a second just to adjust. My, my messy, I just realized, I just saw my studio in the background for the first time in a while. So, um, hi Farah, welcome. So, uh, yeah, we're going to get started. Uh, Sarah, can you let me screen share? Yeah. One second. And yes, if you just came in, we have Henry here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's being good right now, so I'm not going to say anything. Okay, try now, Laura. Just pray. Okay. Let me see. Okay, here we go. So for some reason, I'm not exactly sure why, I can't find the original um, the original PowerPoint presentation. So I'm gonna go with this. I think that's the best that we have at the moment. Super weird. But anyways, let's get into it. So today's class is cloud watching and roomy patterns. Um, there is a connection between the two, and we have lots of examples at Leighton House, and then also artists who were inspired by these patterns at Leighton House, not only just in studies, but in making their own tiles, and we're going to look at those today. Um, and my obsession with William de Morgan uh, continues into this class. Uh, I can't hide it any longer, it seems. So uh, again, uh, for those of you who are new, these classes are all in collaboration with Leighton House. I'm Lorelai and our wonderful moderator, Sarah, um, keeps everyone sane. Um, I really couldn't honestly keep it together without you, seriously. <laughs> so let's go into a few um, just kind of class housekeeping first especially for those who are new students and then obviously returning. So the Art Happens uh, funding project with uh, Leighton House. This is your last chance. So if you would like to donate to, uh, based on uh, what you do donate. So there's lots of really nice kind of delicious looking things available. Um, so please check that out. That is in the email that would have been sent to you today with the Google Drive. So that's at the bottom of the email. So if you're interested in looking at that, by all means, please. But this is your last chance. I'm not exactly sure when it ends. I thought it was the 19th. And to be quite frank, I'm not exactly sure. Oh, it is the 18th. So tomorrow, I think, is your last day. I might be corrected. I'll see in the comments if I was wrong about that. Um, now, just to mention the Google Drive, um, for those of you who are new to using a Google Drive, um, that source is basically, so because we're digital right now and I'm not in a classroom with you, I don't have the ability to just show you different handouts or different photos. So you can find the recording for this class under that subheading. You can find um, class handouts that are going to help you to do the patterns on your own or during this class, photo references. Sometimes I have some different articles, etc. And by the end of this class, you will have access to all four classes, whether you took one class or if you took all four. Uh, and then after one week, I think I said one week, I will uh, rearrange those files. So if you want to come, please download onto your Google Drive or onto your computer. Um, in terms of helping navigate um, uh, you doing that, my apologies, like I'm, I'm really, really bad with IT. I do the bare minimum. Um, 
I don't know. Uh, I'm sure we can figure something out, but uh, I'm really not the best person to ask when it comes to figuring out because some people have different emails too. So, um, you know, iCloud versus Yahoo or Hotmail, I'm not sure the differences. Um, so the next one is email and your artwork. So after last week, and asking you guys to share your stuff and we're gonna put it together. I was shocked at, I mean, first of all, how many of you shared, whether it be on Instagram or Facebook or just into my emails uh, as well. Leighton House was really, really happy, pleasantly surprised at um, just how wonderful of artists all of you are. And then just how, how creative you all are too. So. Um, I'm going to be putting together uh, an email so that you can send me. I know a lot of you have sent me the emails, but my email inbox is a nightmare right now. So I will share that email. Um, we're probably going to put it in the, uh, uh, not letter, sorry. <laughs> the email is going to go out next week um, with all of the information for the class. Um, We'll put that in there so that you know what to email and we'll give parameters like how to label it and we're going to put something together to showcase everyone's work. You'll have an extra two weeks after the class is finished uh, in order to submit everything you would like to submit. Um, and then I guess that kind of segues nicely into um, you know, if you're going to share on social media and you want us to know about it, please tag me so at Lulu Ateliers and uh, Leighton House. Um, I think I got Leighton Houses right. I believe so. Um, I should have double checked that. My apologies. Um, and yeah, so if you'd like us to see that, please hashtag, you can send it directly to me. Um, my apologies this week. I got so many that sometimes I shared it and I didn't know who sent, who, who sent it to me. Um, so uh, that's wonderful, but my apologies if I offended you. I, it was not uh, my my intention. So now that I rambled for uh, I don't know seven eight minutes, I want to kind of like chill things out a little bit. We are talking about cloud watching, so um, you know that's a pastime, especially as children, um, where you know it is enjoying doing nothing, right? So let's kind of get into that kind of mood. If we see the next slide here, I actually found a really interesting word that is talking about finding faces or objects or, or whatever it may be within clouds or in the moon or uh, sometimes in bark or in abstract painting. So it's uh, pareidolia. So this is the example, seeing a dog in a patch of clouds or a face in the moon, um, that's, that's an example of that. And um, I, found this, I found this really lovely quote, but I don't even know who said it. This is the interesting part. It was just kind of in my research for this class. And that was cloud watching legitimizes doing nothing. Um, and I think in the world we live in today, you know, there's so much burnout and there's so much, um, you know, working towards, you know, we don't necessarily know what anymore. So, and there's not much downtime. There's not much time to actually enjoy uh, doing nothing. And I think cloud watching beautifully encapsulates that kind of idea. Um, and it also reminds me of this professor. And if you've taken my other classes, then you've probably heard me say this at least once. And that is, um, I had a really wonderful uh, painting teacher in my first year in university. Uh, her name is Adele Baudry, uh, like a ridiculously hilarious woman. Uh, at the same time, there is, you know, some nuggets of truth that still sit with me today. And I graduated, I don't know, nine years ago, 10 years ago from my undergraduate. So one of, the, one of the things she had said was when, when you don't have any inspiration any longer or you are kind of stuck in the mud, so to speak, she said, look up. And I didn't realize the multi-layered um, wisdom and intelligence in that uh, 
first of all, a lot of the time when we're down in the dumps, we're always kind of actually looking down and our perspective is our feet or the ground. And there's not much interesting there, <laughs> you know. And I started to find that when I was looking up, whether I was, you know, depressed about my artwork or not, that really interesting things started um, coming. I remember finding, you know, <laughs> I remember finding these like really bizarre um, birdhouses that were like at the top of a tree and I could see them from, from my perspective. And I thought to myself, if I didn't look up, there's absolutely no way I could have seen those. And they're really, really like, I don't know if you know what steampunk is, but steampunk birdhouses. They're clearly just for whoever was living in that area to enjoy them and the birds. So I encourage you, whether you're an artist or not, to always look up, you know, look at the clouds. Um, I mean, preferably don't do it while you're walking somewhere, <laughs> but uh, yeah, try to slow down and enjoy. So that's you know, kind of the, the theme that we're gonna take in today's class. So let's go down here. Um, so what I did in today's class, I did quite a bit of cross-referencing between the tiles that are in situ at uh, Leighton House. And then uh, today it's only William de Morgan I'm talking about who, took those patterns, studied those patterns, and then created something new from them. So um, here are some similarities. If we look in this area here, it's not identical, but the idea is definitely there. When we look at this tile panel and the um, tiles that, I guess, technically border panels, we have these blue leaves that are going in and out with roomy patterns. And I'll, I'll explain what roomy patterns are in, in, a, in a few when we get to them. Um, so we have these wonderful leaves going around here. Now, I didn't find something exactly the same that William de Morgan had done. Let me check my line about that. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Um, so we have on the right hand side, we have some studies by William de Morgan, some watercolor or gouache studies uh, of similar panels and similar colors. And this is something he did a lot. Um, we have quite a few of his studies showing this. Um, you know, still the Damascene tiles from Leighton House. It's, it's, um, I'm not exactly sure about this one. This may have been Leighton House. It may have been some of the, the collection from the British Museum or what's in the British Museum now that may have been from Leighton House previously or other sources. Um, but yeah, so I'm trying to show you some of these uh, similar ideas. This pattern that's in the middle of the leaf here, this is a very kind of abstracted uh, cloud pattern without, you know, the, the fluffiness to the clouds that we're going to draw today. Sometimes you find this, you know, just kind of a suggestion of the clouds given. Now these cloud motifs actually originally come, or it's believed they originally come from Ming Dynasty uh, porcelain that had the dragons on them and the dragon tail was, you know, like kind of um, wiggling to the end. I have a photo of it on the break. I'm going to look for it again. Just before class, I couldn't locate it, but I'll try to find it. Um, so we have I think it's reverse anthropomorphization. Yeah, so it's going from an animal to, you know, a cloud. And we have that also with the Rumi patterns where we have the Seljuk eagle, and then that transforms into the Rumi motif that almost looks like a leaf, but it's not considered a motif. It's considered to be from the wing or the beak of the, of the bird. Also, I'll show you those after the break. Um, so we have that kind of, you know, tail movement from the dragon. You can kind of see this in the cloud bands here. And it's just kind of one way that the Muslims, when they encountered, um, or when they were not necessarily encountered, but when they were trying to integrate the visual vernacular or culture that existed, um, within their own culture and trying to kind of Islamify it or trying to appropriate it in an appropriate way. That's kind of what ends up happening. So that's why we get our, our uh, roomy motifs and our cloud patterns looking like this. And then 
This next slide here. So this is kind of like the negative version of this one up here. We have pinch motif up here. And then in this one, we happen to have carnations. Um, so yeah, this is just another look at it. Some kind of ink drawings um, and the artist trying to map how these different systems work because we definitely have foundations in these uh, motifs. And now we have another one, which is much easier to kind of, that's the last one, no. Um, that's much easier to, to map. This is quite direct. And this one isn't specific to necessarily Damascene style. You can find this pattern here, sorry. You can find this pattern here on the bottom all throughout Istanbul, all throughout Ottoman um, uh, architecture. And yeah, the reason why this one is here is because inside of this flower, and unfortunately we're not gonna do this pattern today. I hemmed and hawed about it, but we're not, we're gonna do something else. Um, but in the center here, we have these wonderful, lovely cloud patterns, which in De Morgan's, we can see it a little bit better when they put both motifs together so we don't get it sliced down the center. Um, but yeah, so actually I'm just looking now. So De Morgan's is kind of flipped upside down, um, but either way it's, it's correct. Uh, but what's interesting actually here is there's no red, there's no purple, there's no green, it's just two tones. And it really uses the white background of the, um, of the Tashkaro, of the, uh, of the quartz stone paste tile, it's quite a mouthful in English. Um, it really uses that white color as, as a color. So they have like the, the white outlines along some of the saws leaves and, you know, they really utilize the white interior of the flowers, um, which is, you know, often not necessarily the case within uh, Iznik. Uh, all right, so this is the last slide. So these are the patterns that we're gonna look at today. On the left-hand side, this is William de Morgan's tile. Um, and this is his kind of answer to cloud bands and carnations. I realized in every class we have looked at carnations and it was not intentional. <laughs> um, but because they're, they're used so often, it's kind of hard to get away from and, you know, they're, they're wonderful flowers uh, themselves. Um, so that's one of the ones we're going to do today. And then on the right hand side, this is where the roomy patterns kind of come in. This is a simplified roomy pattern, um, very simplified. We have ortaba and we have some different um, motifs that are coming in. Um, yeah, very simplified uh, elements of roomy patterns. Okay, so believe it or not, I'm done for today um, in terms of chatting. Any questions? I can stop sharing now. Let me see, I didn't open the chat box. I just enamored on. Uh, one question, why is it called Rumi? Ha, huh, okay, yeah, I always forget to answer this question. So Rumi has nothing to do well, actually, let me word this correctly. So most people know of the poet Jalaladin Rumi. Rumi actually is coming from the location. So the, the Roman Empire was divided in two. And then the Ottoman Empire continued to use those um, distinctions. So <clears throat> Rum means from Rome. Can I point out the clouds again? Uh, which clouds? I think in the De Morgan sketch that was mostly pencil with some colouring, that was the one where people seem to have uh, a little difficulty just finding that. Uh... This one? Yeah. These are the in the middle. They're, as I was saying, they are very oh, really? um, uh, pared down. Mm. These are meant to represent clouds, but he hasn't added in the kind of like fluffiness to them. I don't know how to explain that any better. <laughs> I think fluffiness covers it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. So are we ready to get drawing? I'm assuming yes. Um, 
let's see. Yeah, and, and in this last one that we're looking at today, these are actually quite a bit more exaggerated than what you would even see in the Ottomans that are already exaggerated. <laughs> so um, these are there. De Morgans are almost on the like the edge of cartoonish, uh, and I don't mean it in like a in a in a derogatory way, but with how like kind of uh, spread out they get, they get kind of uh, cartoonish. No, the motifs were not from specifically Constantinople. Um, the motifs were from a general area known as Rum, which is an area that had been occupied by the Roman Empire. So that's how Rumi gets the name, Rumi, or if you see Rum Ele, it's people from that area. Exactly, they do almost look like a Chinese dragon because mm -hmm. that's the derivative. Okay, I'm closing the chat box for now. I got it. I'll shout out if there's a problem. <laughs> no problem. Okay, so compasses, rulers, erasers, pencils, that's what we need for now. And I'm going to turn this over here. Yes, thank you. So now I don't have to see my messy uh, <laughs> studio any longer. All right. Okay, good. All right. So first thing we're going to do is draw a circle with a seven centimeter radius. I'm just making sure I choose the dark pencil instead of having to struggle from the past two weeks. Is there any preference for the paper, watercolour sketch, any particular type or just any that they like? Um, I'm assuming most people will probably uh, do a good copy after. I might be wrongly assuming that. Um, you can use A4. This will fit on A4 or you can do A3. It doesn't really matter. Um, but it will definitely fit on A4. The, the size of the pattern is only going to be 14 centimetres wide. Um, what am I doing? I'm getting a pencil. Okay, so I'm gonna draw. Okay, just making sure this is straight. There we go. Okay. So for those of you who have taken a class with me before, we're going to divide this circle in four. So if you know how to do that, go right ahead. I'm just getting my compass going. Uh, Lorelei, um, mm -hmm. I think you need to move your uh, image to the my right. Because you're not in the middle of the, yeah, that's it. Maybe second. up a wee bit if you can. Move this up. Yeah. I think I had moved it last week down. Yeah, that's because it was at the end. <laughs> Sorry, last week's was that little close up one at the end. <laughs> no, I can't get it to stay. One second. What radius did you want for this one? 7 cm, yeah? 7, 7. Okay, and Ikra says landscape or portrait. Ikra, I think it depends on whether you're using A4 or, or A3. I'd go for uh, landscape if you're using A4. Uh, yeah, exactly. Sorry, I don't have the hand strength for this. Okay. Um, I hope that helps. Give me a second. Let me get this. The lighting looks kind of off too. Is that better? No, it's a bit yellowy. That's better. That sort okay. of more white color is better. Okay, give me a second to adjust this height. I'm not sure which lever does what. <laughs> New equipment. Yeah. yeah. Let's see. 
Okay. And just give me a second, I'm gonna raise this actually. Cause I don't have any room for my hand to be honest. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna darken this up a bit. Give me a second. Is that better? Okay, so for those of you who are who are new, we are going to get the vertical by placing our compass point here. Like so. And then we are connecting them and drawing right through the center. Like so. Now this spot, we're gonna put the compass again. Just make sure that yours hasn't moved. Sarah, is it freezing? No. No, okay, good. Well, not from my end anyway. I've spotlighted okay. it. Okay. Everybody, everybody should be seeing it. Okay, good. Okay, so now at this point, we're going to draw a box around these outer petals. This is gonna give us our tile. All right, now the next part we're gonna do is, we are just gonna draw this diagonal. We're not gonna do both, it's not necessary. Like so. I'm really worried about it being visible. Um, it is visible, I mean, it's, it's faint-ish. I don't know. It's crazy because it's really dark. Uh, I don't want to use black pen because I'm putting stuff on top, but. Yeah. Um, I think most people can see it. Anybody can, uh, people just give me a, oh no. <laughs> some say visible, some say faint. I think we might just have to. It's weird, it wasn't that, it wasn't. Okay. There's more visible. All right. so but, uh... All right, I'll try to adjust it. I'm not sure. I'm just going to try. I have another color setting. Sorry, I don't want to prolong this. Okay. All right, so this, this line that's going down here, that is just from corner to corner through the center. Now this one here that we're drawing, we're drawing from this top corner 
to this midpoint, to this horizon line, like so. And then the same thing down here. Okay, so now you kind of get uh, these areas here, top and bottom, they're gonna house our carnations. So we're gonna just not think about those for a little bit. Now this central area here is gonna be where our cloud band is. So, I mean, we have, we have some of the examples from uh, William de Morgan and we can, we can follow that. You can feel, you know, your artistic license as well. So I'm gonna show you what I would draw and I'm hoping that it's visible. So this is just kind of the general sketch of that kind of uh, wiggly line, I guess you could say. So from this corner to that corner, based on the center, like from each side, it's gonna be the same. If you wanna use, tracing paper, you can. Normally, I just go with it. I like a little bit of uh, naturalness in what I'm doing. So I'm going to start down here. I'm going to go up, down, up again, down. Oops, sorry. Like so, so you have two up, one large one down, and you have these kind of swish and flakes on the end, and then these two bottom ones. So one, two, three, four, five. So that's kind of the main, the main kind of um, cloud band. And that just goes along that, that midline there. Don't fuss too much with it. Just kind of let it be. Now, the next part is we're gonna add in the carnations in the corners. Um, so we do have a carnation in here. This is the easiest one to get. Um, and actually, my apologies, I told you, you didn't need this one, but we're gonna, we're gonna do it. Yeah. So put in that diagonal as well. I forgot about the carnation. So put in that diagonal and then we're gonna use from this area, from here to here, that, that's gonna be the width of our carnation. So I'm just bringing my compass back. I have extended my compass to those lines. Sorry, getting my arm out of the way. I have extended my compass there. And then like so. So we have a little semicircle in here. So that line, if you've done everything the same measurement as me, should be two centimeters. But if you chose to do another size by accident, the only thing you need to do is measure in between that diagonal line and where that um, petal comes. I hope that makes sense. So that's number one. And then this uh, horizon line, you're gonna stick the pencil end on that line, and you're gonna draw a semicircle. They shouldn't touch, they might be close, but don't worry, that's just kind of mapping them in at the moment. We'll get around to kind of fixing those. And then up here, we're gonna do the same thing. Make sure it's on the line, it's gonna come like so. All right, so hopefully you have taken some of my other classes where you have done the carnations. If not, 
Um, you can look back on those. I'm going to quickly go through it here. Uh, they're not so difficult, so don't worry. So I'm going to get the bottom part of the carnation in, just kind of like a U shape, like so. I'm just extending it down a little bit. Lorelai, I think a few people yeah. are having just a little trouble seeing the last bits that yeah. you Give me one second, I'll put in my darker pen. Okay, so. Like so, and then I put it back up here. I wonder if it's, I don't remember having different lighting. It's bizarre. It's obviously night here, so it doesn't change much, but I think that's visible. I can see it. I hope it's visible. Okay, so this first one we're going to take care of here. We have this U shape, and I just kind of put these scalloped edges. I put three. It doesn't matter. Um, and put five if you want. Now from the center, I work from the center and I kind of work in a fan shape out. Like that. And I scallop the ends. I give a little space in between. Like so. And that's your first tulip for this one. Incarnation. Did I say tulip? Yeah, I'm incarnation. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so same idea for these ones here. So we're going to come up like this. This is about a centimeter and a half. So where that midpoint is, it's about a centimeter and a half. We just kind of want to make sure that these don't touch the other one, the other same thing. You draw it out and you leave a little space in between. Like so. All right, so that's that one area almost finished. I'll give you guys a couple more seconds. Also, while you guys are taking a couple more seconds, I'll, I'll say, um, you know, uh, I really, really appreciate it. It's really nice when you guys send me, uh, you know, words of encouragement or compliments. It's really nice. Uh, I've gotten a few from, you know, in my emails or, and on my social media platforms and also you, some of you have sent uh, messages to Leighton House about both me and Sarah of course it's really nice mm -hmm. so I really appreciate that it, it means a lot um, uh, so medium um, does it matter how many petals are in each so usually it's it's an odd number so five or three this one here it's five because of the space we have these ones here, because we have a little less space to expand down here, we have three. So these ones are upside down, yes.
Now, on top of this uh, carnation, I'm gonna draw a little bit of an oval, like so. It's a little bit of a departure from De Morgan's, but still, still very similar. And then we're gonna draw three leaves. One, two, yeah. Is it okay, Sarah, or no? Yep. I just, somebody had asked if there were ridges on the top of the petals and I was just checking your drawing and I was gonna say ridges on the carnation, but not necessarily on the- There are scallops. Scallops, yeah. Okay, so then from this little area to that bottom of the tulip, we have a line connecting them like so. And then the same on the other side. All right. So now we have uh, on the bottom, I'm just asking myself, how do I want to do this one? Okay, on the bottom, it's kind of a similar idea, but it's not identical. So let's get our compasses again. Yeah. All right, so from this area here where the circle touches that line, so we have the curve of the circle and the diagonal um, bisector here, we're going to put our compass and we're going to, oops, we're going to extend to that line there like so. It's probably, let me see, it's a smidge smaller than the ones that we just did. Just a smidge. And then taking this exact same measurement, we're gonna take this pencil point, we're gonna put it here on that line and we're gonna swing around like before. These ones are gonna touch a little bit more, but don't worry. Like so. There we go. All right. Now, yeah, about one centimeter in from the corner. This is one centimeter. That is where we are going to sketch in these kind of areas that are gonna connect the other two um, carnations to this middle carnation. And then from here, we're gonna do a little bit larger of a U than the other carnations. This one's gonna be a little bit wider, like so. And then these are gonna have scallops. I'm gonna do five. It doesn't actually really matter how many you put in there. And then we're gonna kind of fatten up this line a little bit, this stem. Again, this is sketching at this point. I wanna ask how is the pace for everyone? I'll look up. Okay, good. I think for a couple of people who maybe this is their first one, it, 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 they're just catching up with you a little bit, but I've just advised them to, to, you know, look at the videos afterwards as well. Okay, okay, no problem. 
Um, just checking where is my pencil sharpener. I'm trying not to move everything. <laughs> All right, so here we go. I'm doing my best. I don't know what the issue is. Uh, at our break time, I'm going to play around with it to make sure that the lighting's better. So just as we had done with our carnations before, I'm going to start with that middle point, come towards the center like so. Two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Now follow that, give it a space. Okay. And then Yeah, these ones are kind of a little wonky. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay, so this one you can do a similar kind of shape up. And then this one it's going to have only three. And then the same over here. On the other side. And as I told, like if you took some of these other classes with me, the Damascene style, and also we're looking at William de Morgan here, right? So he took his own uh, artistic liberties. If you don't have space for another petal, don't fret, it's all good. Like just, you know, channel the spiritness of the whimsy, whatever you wanna use, whatever word you wanna use. Um, because that's the best part of these. Okay, so now I am looking at my kind of cloud band sketch that I have here. And I'm realizing that probably if we see this, this line here under our carnation, I need to move this line a little bit. Just a little bit. Um, <laughs> One of, one of my uh, wonderful students, uh, Aisha, sent me an email this week telling me about my Lorelei-isms. <laughs> I was not aware I had isms until uh, she, she wrote them out for me. One being um, something along the lines that I can't remember what I said, but something about uh, uh, erasers were made for a reason. Yeah, I need to erase things. <laughs> So exactly the same case here. Um, this is the sketching part of this. So if we got to improve something, then by all means. So I'm moving this one over a bit. Like so. All right. Even, even I would move that one a little bit more. That one's not looking the way I want it to. Just like that, there we go. And your page might be a little bit of a mess right now, but that's okay. It's not the final one and All right, so now let's get a little bit of our cloud going on. 
So this area here is the general shape, as I was saying before, and we're going to add above and below. So above, we're going to kind of fill in that space with a semicircle. You're getting lots of compliments. People like watching you draw and sketch. <laughs> That's interesting. I think it sounds like I've got a career in YouTube then I can just start posting my videos. It's because you take your time with it and it's it's so sort of like precise and just neat and tidy and it's very elegant. <laughs> there we go. Like so. Okay, and we're just filling these areas in with that semicircle, as I said before. I'm not going to do this one. This one's a little kind of shallow for that. All right. So now this kind of bottom area, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to erase it a little bit just because on my page, it's very dark, dark enough for you to see, but I want to kind of replace the line. Where is the eraser? So I'm just going to ever so slightly kind of erase this a smidge. And then in these areas, I'm going to add that kind of cloud effect. Is it frozen? Yep, you have just a wee bit actually. What about now? No, I'm just going to take the spotlight off. Um, and then I'm going to put it back on again and that might rejig it. Yeah, Lorelei, that's it. I can see you moving it. Yeah, you're fine. Okay. It, I've got a message though, that's the only reason why. Um, but now it has changed it. One second. Let me see if it'll flip. That's actually quite nice and you need to move the camera back a little bit upwards. I can see the, that's it. Yeah, but it's the wrong direction now. Ah, uh, yes. Let me see. Okay. Let me see if it's going <laughs> to. That's the wrong direction. That's it. Funnily Is the lighting enough, better now? Yeah. When you're on the uh, landscape. The light seems to come in a bit better, but we can think about that for next. That's weird. That's weird. Okay, so we have our little fluffiness here, and then we're going to come in underneath like so. Okay, so that goes the same for all of these little areas. So I'm gonna start adding in some of these fluffy areas or cloudy areas, so to speak. And just you do it along with me. And then I think at 9.05, we'll take a quick break. We'll finish this because there's not much left to do. And then we'll get going on the other pattern if you can handle it i hope you guys can do two <laughs> patterns today <laughs> okay so i'll get mine in a second no it's okay sorry now I'm just kind of paranoid. And 
And down here on the end of this area here, I'm going to kind of extend it like so. Back over here. I'm excited to see what colors you guys use for these. You guys blew me away from the past, blew me away because of the last two weeks, but I'm curious what you'll do with these little clouds. They're lots of fun. And then this last one. They do look like dragons. <laughs> All right, so we have two more minutes until we take a break. So this bottom cloud here connects to this um, carnation down here. And then we have two kind of leaves that sprout out from there, like so. Now, inside of these little areas, De Morgan has done some really interesting things where he has put these kind of sprigs of little flowers. Um, so this one here, this one's really nice. It kind of curves in like so. And then just a very simple, kind of like those flowers you doodle, five pointed flower like so. And then kind of leaves. So basically when I do these leaves, I do kind of a bent um, line over, over the stem and then I come out, go back in and then the same on the other side, like so. Uh, from here, we have one in there. Actually, we're almost finished this one. So we'll just, we'll, yeah, we're almost finished this one. So we'll just leave it till we go. So, and then we have a few leaves. And then another one up in here. This area we're going to leave for a minute. And we're gonna come over here. Now, um, so I keep looking to the right and that's because I have the, the hand painted um, handout for today's class sitting over here. Now it's a little different because we did sketch this kind of line in and that's okay. So what you'll see versus what, uh, what you'll see on the handout versus what I'm drawing today is just a little different. Like this flower here had another flower hanging out of it. Here, I'm just going to put a singular flower, I think. Yeah, like so. And then here we have another one coming down and in. Like so. Okay. Now the last bit of this. Actually, I'm going to connect this one actually. Just doing something else. 
Now the last bit of this, we have this kind of central area that's going to connect to here. Laura, so, I have one quick question. Sorry to interrupt. It just says, are these leaves different? So the leaves you just put in, are they different to the other ones? Which leaves? Uh, it was a recent question, so I'm thinking the ones at the bottom of the little pinch. No, the um, your little. Ah, uh, these ones. No, they're they're just they're they're not really anything special. They're just. Okay. Um, I don't know. There, there isn't, there isn't uh, a special name for these. Okay, no worries. <laughs> the single ones, no, the single one is just half of the double, that's all. Okay, so this last little area in here, I'm going to just lighten it up a little bit because I've got a lot of stuff going on in here. And then I'm gonna put in three little flowers in here. If your space is a little smaller, just do one, but I, I made the space so that I could have three. Like so. And then all of them connect in. And then we have those same kind of leaves I was just talking about at the bottom. Is the image frozen? No, I don't think so. No. Sometimes okay. when you move your hand, it just takes a second to readjust the, the um, focus, that's all. Ah, okay, okay. I'll try to move a little slower then. Um, going down from here, we're gonna have one stem and it doesn't actually touch those flowers, but it's, it comes close. And then underneath just kind of this half moon shape, And then, now these leaves that I'm using on the um, carnation aren't technically traditional um, carnation like you would see in the Isnik form. Again, this is De Morgan's interpretation of what he saw. Just putting that out there. Anything else? No, we're done that one. Well done. So this is William de Morgan tile. All right, lovelies. Um, just take a six or yeah, seven minute break to stretch your legs. So be back here at 917, uh, and if you whatever 17 is on the hour. And if you leave this on the screen, if you wouldn't mind, Lorelai, and then anyone trying to catch up can. Of course, of course, I'm going to leave it. And I'm also going to try to figure out what the heck's going on with the lighting. And I'm going to try not to touch the table at the same time. <laughs> okay. Okay. So whilst Lorelai is having a break as well, if anybody has any questions uh, that you think I can help with, then uh, pop it in the chat and I'll, I'll gladly try. The original tile is in the um, uh, photographic references and also it is in the uh, presentation I shared. And it's also on the handout. No problem. What about turning down Exactly, Lapina. Thank you very much. Um, is it improved a bit or no? It's it's actually pretty good for me, but I'm not sure about wing question mark. What do you mean shooting? Oh, she said, how would we paint this onto a circular plate? Just wing it was the question. <laughs> um, no, you can you can pounce it didn't 
Is this the Shirin that took my class in Istanbul? Shirin Hussain, I think so. I'm waiting for a yes or no. Um, while that's happening, I'm just gonna turn off my can I enlarge the same Shirin? Yeah, I was gonna say that. Thank you, Joanna, for mentioning that. You can adjust the the screen for brightness as well. And I'm just trying to fix this, so bear with me while my arms are in the way. And there's only so much a gal can do. Okay. All right. Hopefully that works. I got a question there. What was it? <laughs> yeah, uh, for the last class, um, I will share some of share some more of my work. Um, I'm trying to see. Um, so I got a message from Leila uh, Ahsan. Um, send me the message again. I can't see. I can't see the message you sent. I'm getting lost in the messages here. That's all right. Don't worry. Have a break, Lorelai, and I'll, I'll answer the ones that are up. All right. Let me just stop my <laughs> video. So, so I've got one question here, which is Salima. So Salima, the Google Cloud thingy me, Bobby, um, Lorelai will send you an email that has a link to a Google Drive and all of the documents that you need, plus the presentation when it eventually finishes and anything else like that will be on that Google link. So you just click on that and it takes you onto a cloud. And in that cloud is everything that you can follow up on from, from today. Uh. Hang on, Lorelai, I've seen your note and I'm just trying. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> the, the class has already been sent earlier today. If you, if you did not get, or well, you should have, you should have gotten the email. Um, if you cannot find it, check your spam. Please check your spam first before you email me. If it's still not in your spam or in your junk mail or in your promotions or wherever it may be, then send me an email and I'll resend the link to you. Yeah, I've just put the PDF on, uh, just up again if anybody wants it. Uh, yes, Razia, there will be a, a recording. I'm recording it now. So once that um, renders, I think is the right word, then, um, then we'll put that on the Google Drive. Um, what I'll also do is um, whilst there's a small break. A lot of people have been asking about the, the, the oneness campaign and, and things like that. And I will just very quickly um, put into the chat all of the links that we've been talking about. So Leighton House, Lorelei's website, Instagram, those kind of things. Um, so give me a second. So Sab Saba said, why do tiles have cloud motifs and what do the clouds symbolize? Um, we'll have to Ooh, check with Lorelei. <laughs> I was gonna say, we might have to check with Lorelai about the symbolism. <laughs> the cloud motif is something you see across Islamic art, um, right from sort of the Central Asian and across into, into Turkey. Yes, Barra, the link for Workshop 4 will be, you can um, log on from this, this bunch of info I'm about to send. So just give me one second. So anybody who wants to know any of the links available, if you look at your chat now. Actually, I need, I need two more minutes. Give me two more minutes, I'll be back. No worries. Sabah, the strange thing about some of these tiles that Lorelei showed is that when you see cloud motifs in a leaf, I think at that point it is just decorative. Um, my favorite ones are the ones from uh, Central Asian designs because they're these great big fat fluffy clouds. Uh, whereas the Ottoman ones are a bit more like you're seeing here, you know, they're much more sort of stylized and thin and knobbly. And sometimes they even go into, they look like really, really tight knots with just tiny little 
fluffy bits sticking out of it. But uh, it's, it's a relatively common motif in Islamic art. You see it on tiles, carpets, obviously in manuscripts, sometimes in um, sort of illustrations as opposed to manuscripts. But I am going to look into that. What do clouds symbolize? Hmm, interesting question. <laughs> yes, maybe for beauty, sir, but it could be just to, to sort of put some illustrations in there and, and, and fill out some space. Um, I do have a book on symbols. Give me one second. Mm -hmm. I think as Lorelei said, some of them look like dragons and a lot of the times it could have been because it was, you know, picking up on some of the Chinese uh, ceramics that come across the Silk Roads, but um, they could have morphed then into, into um, cloud bands. Let me just... I knew this book would come in handy. Ooh, Ulrika, that's a good, uh, Sarah, yes, heaven, could could be, um, but there's not much religious symbolism, but, but religious symbolism in this style, so I'm not sure. Uh, Ulrika, a book to recommend. Lorelei can definitely recommend a book. It depends what you're looking at, but the one she usually recommends is called Isnik by John Carswell. Um, I'm typing the name of the um, author into the chat and the book, it's my cat, you can see behind me. Um, oh, thank you, Susan. Great. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, sorry, John Carswell, it's usually called Isnick. But then there's another one that she particularly can recommend for um, this, the geometry of plants, particularly by Keith Critchlow. Um, I'm just typing that in as well. The Hidden Geometry of Flowers. Thank you. I was just looking for where I'd written that down. <laughs> I'm just looking for those handouts that have the dragons on them. I don't know how I can't find it right now. Well, Susan's got the Penguin Book of Symbols. I haven't got the Penguin one. I'm looking at the, the uh, this massive tome here, Susan. <laughs> carried this back from the from the UK to Doha in my hand luggage. That was basically most of my weight limit. <laughs> Bizarre. <laughs> oh, it's always that when you're looking for it, you can't find it. <laughs> and then when you're not looking for it, you find it. Does that come out right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> also, a little, oh, the monster has arrived, by the way. Uh, yeah, mine just ran up behind me. She's sitting on the cupboard. I'm thinking as a little reward for all of you guys who are incredible, I'm going to share a little coloring page for you. But give me a couple days to get it up there. But a Damascene coloring page. Even I can manage coloring. Yeah. <laughs> especially for all of you who are in some kind of restricted something. I mean, Istanbul now has joined the party of restrictions. And I'm not gonna share my, my thoughts on the ridiculousness of it, but I digress. Anyways, I cannot find what I'm trying to find and I will figure it out, but just not right now. Let's see here. Oops. OK, 
Okay. All right, I'm back. My apologies for taking a little bit longer. And make sure. Okay. So we have 40 minutes left. I think we can knock this next one out. 40 minutes. I have confidence in all of us. Oh, uh, well, yeah, ex exactly, Susan. <laughs> oh, um, but he he breaks down when when we're talking about the geometry of flowers, he's not trying to tell you how to make the flowers. It's how to see the geometry within the flowers. Um, but his geometry books, he has quite a few books on geometry and arches and different architectural things. Those are really good. Okay. I did recommend Botanicum before. It may not have been in this class. Anything else? Did you mention the Arthur Milner book? Oh, no, I didn't. Uh, I did Carswell well and Critchlow. Yeah. Arthur Milner, uh, Damascus Tiles specifically, and there's lots from the Leighton House's collection in it. Fortunately, I don't have a copy of it at the moment. Let's put it in the chat. All right. So, my dears, if you hear that racket in the background, my apologies. The orange monster has returned. Okay. All right, fantastic. So this next one you can do on A4 as well, doesn't matter. Um, if anyone has joined us from United States or North America, that would be eight and a half by 11. So a normal size piece of paper, well, normal. That's the Canadian in me coming out right there, a normal size piece of paper. Um, yeah. All right, so horizontal line. I'm working on my social media branding at the moment. And those who are doing some of the branding for me suggested for Henry. So for all of you who, for all of those who um, love the cat content, there will be a highlight just specifically for the monster. Uh, okay, so our radius is going to be six centimeters. Yep. And he has a love for compasses, that's for sure. Yep, 6 a.m. Donna. Okay, dividing this in four, like the other ones. Come down here to these intersection points to get, shh, get out of here, to get um, our vertical. Okay. All right. Okay. 
So we're putting our point there on that. This is why you double measure, because I just saw mine's off a smidge, hence my double line there, if you can see that. Is it okay? I hope so. Yeah. Now we are just going around the petals like the last one. Lorelei, I think the camera's just knocked slightly off kilter. That's it. Hello, young man. <laughs> Is that better? Yes, the, the lines were looking a bit like this rather than this. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, all right, so now we're going to put in our diagonals. Can you guys see this? Check this out. <laughs> Can't possibly be allowed to do anything without an audience. Exactly. All right, so now we've got our diagonal in. We're gonna put in a dynamic square. Are you writing what that means or should I demonstrate, Sarah? I was just, I was just gonna say dynamic square is the is the one that looks like a kite <laughs> or diamond or yeah like a diamond <laughs> so there is our dynamic square so the point is up at the top okay enough 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 you're gonna get kicked out in a second and then our static square is in between There we go. He likes little scrunched up balls of paper. There we go. Like so. And all of this is taking place inside of the circle. Right, now we have three internal circles. First one is two and a half centimeters. Sarah, do you want me to name all the sizes and then I'll repeat them? Yeah, go for it. Okay, first one, two and a half centimeter radius. Next one, 1 1.5, and then the interior is 0.5. And if the if the half if the point five centimeters if the half centimeter one is giving you a little grief then you can just kind of draw it in um, by hand. 
mine may give me a little bit of grief. That's why I'm checking. This compass is great, but for these small circles, it's really not. And I probably complain about that in almost every class I teach. Okay. All right, so we have vertical and horizontal facing points of the star. And then we have ones on the diagonals. The points that are on the diagonals, those ones are going to have our ortaba motif. Okay, and I'm gonna demonstrate which ortaba we're gonna do, but those are designated to these areas. Now these uh, are basically north, south, east, west, if you wanna think of cardinal directions. So yeah, I'll do that. That might be easier to kind of dictate. Right, so these areas, they're gonna have a little bud inside of them. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add the kind of, uh, it's almost cloud-like, this little area that follows all of these um, uh, vertices, I guess we can call them. Now, in each corner, we're gonna have this kind of heart, bottom of a heart shape. So I'm gonna draw that first and show you like so, and it's gonna make sense in a second. Like so, all of the way around like this. Okay, so in each of these little corners, we're gonna have this kind of shape. You can draw those in first if it makes it easier. I'm gonna do that around the exterior first. And that double line, they just follow each And then this one last section. Sorry, 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 sorry. My apologies, everyone.
Okay. I saw the sausages comment. Um, just have a, a better look at it uh, on the handout and it'll help you a little bit more. And it'll turn it from sausages into whatever the shape is here. I'm not sure what to call it. So we had to draw those kind of um, fluorated edges in so that we know how much space we have in these areas. Um, so we're going to do the diagonals first, the ortaba. Now there's a trick and I have it, tracing paper. So when you do one, we're just going to put it all the way around our motif. So I'm going to draw in one. Now the first part of this motif is going to be above and inside this line here. So very similar shape to here. So it goes out from that midpoint and down. And then the same on the other side, like that. What shoot can I do? And then it's gonna go out and come back in. I feel like I don't have enough space. Give me a second. Yeah, I think, yeah, okay. I lied, give me one second. We're going to bring this up just a little bit. Like so, yeah. Like so. So this is just maybe one mil above that line that's cutting through. And then we're going to double up on that line. And it's going to kind of come into that sideline. Like so. And then inside. Like that. So now how we make our lives easier. We trace over that shape. Like so. And then we transfer it all the way around. Use my scissors for this job. Get out of here. This cat's purpose seems to make me, uh, yeah, is to make me want to look unprofessional. <laughs> this over a little bit so I can see things. OK. 
Okay. And then the last one up here. Fit it along that line too. And use another object to transfer it. This cat also has a love affair with uh, erasers. The white vinyl variety. Anything that can be pushed onto the floor, I would, I should think. Yeah, exactly. All right, so that part is done. We're gonna put the buds in. Now in this area we have the, the budge size is going to be dictated by how much space you left up here. So I've got probably about one centimeter, 1.2 centimeter. So I don't want it touching. And this is, this is not the most exact science here. It's not like geometry. So just kind of put a semicircle in there. You do not need to get your compass out. But we're just going to get that in there. Excuse me. And then, what does this look like again? Oh yeah. We're gonna come down almost about the same amount here and that's where the bottom of our, so what I mean by same amount is from here to here and then from there to there, it should be about the same. Yeah. What's my story? Yes, it is, okay. So this is the top part here, and I'm going to put a little semicircle there in the middle again, and then I'm going to have my leave come out and down, leave come out and down. So yeah, I might need to, I was going to say you might need to darken that up a bit. So that's the middle point, the leaf that's come out and then connected back at the center and then on the other side. Now, um, in the middle, we're gonna have a three petaled flower. And then in here, I'm just going to, I had an extra petal on the top, but um, my spacing is a little bit different. Now that one, we're gonna take that again, we're gonna trace it. And we're going to transfer it around in those empty spots. And then the last thing we're going to do is the center flower, which is quite simple, and then connecting all of these pieces so it makes sense. So I'm going to transfer this here. all the way around just in one good shot. And then my last friend here. And I'm looking at this one here and I've got a little bit of space up here and also here. So I might even add in that third petal I put on top that you'll see in your handouts. Again, this is your tile. Have fun, just enjoy it. And I realize like, I'll, I'll say something too. Like I've been, I've been educated, you know, in you know regular education institutions as well as traditional art ones, and I've worked with a master, etc. And you know, I am 
I am also uh, a licensed teacher and you know studied art education pedagogy, et cetera, et cetera. And one of the things I can honestly say is um, the best way to get people to uh, appreciate whatever art form it may be is to allow them to play with it. And I know my, my own uh, traditional Turkish art teachers might kind of be a little angry at me sometimes but with the way I teach things, but uh, I think it should be accessible to everyone and not kind of always these hidden secrets. I'm not saying I don't make you work for it, but, um, but yeah, I'd rather people be making the art and appreciating it than just, uh, you know, an arm's length, so to speak. All right, so those are in, we're looking good. Now the central flower part. This isn't so difficult. I'm actually gonna do this with a black pen because I noticed that the, the light is kind of pushing it out, like um, not pushing it out, washing it out. So in the center, we have just a small eight petaled flower based on those divisions that we already have. Like so. And then the same thing We're still good for time, actually. Like that. And then this this last petal here, it's going to be it's going to have two scallops. So one halfway, and then the second one, like so. I'm looking at it now, and I think this little area is just a smidge too big. So if you were to redo this one on your own, I'd probably do like 2.2 or 2.3 instead of 2.5. I may have rounded it when I gave the instructions to you guys. Yeah, no problem, Ahmed. I think people, a few people need to just catch up with you. <laughs> no problem. I'll finish this one. And I, yeah, exactly. Thank you, Ahmed, for for mentioning. Um, for the last part here, uh, I want everyone to be on the same page, and we have we have ten minutes, so that's that's not an issue. Exactly, thank you very much. There's a question from Shazia. It says, are the flower petals drawn with weighted lines? Um, they can be. That's a very ISNIC, um, specifically ISNIC thing to do. Um, and also a very like illuminated manuscript kind of style. Now in the tiles themselves, you'll see that, but it's much more kind of controlled now. Like you'll see it much more often now than in the originals. Uh, the originals, I don't think, like if you think about it, you get an order for tiles um, at the Blue Mosque. I mean, this would be a dream project. And you have to put out 20,000 tiles, which means most likely you're probably making 30,000 tiles. The kind of weighted line, it is very, very time consuming. So yes, it should touch the inner flower. The ortaba motif should touch the inner flower. So, the, so back to what I was saying, um, you can draw them with weighted lines. Um, I do it out of habit. But if you look at the originals, like the original uh, tiles, you won't see that. That's a, a, a very kind of specific thing to what's happening in traditional arts in Turkey at the moment. 
Lorelai, what is a weighted line? Weighted line is when you get, um, so you go from thin to thick. Ah, uh, okay. Like so. It's not so, I can't show so much with the, with the marker. No, 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 I can see, I can see the way you've done that. <laughs> it's one thing I'd never come across before. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Are we ready for the last part? I'm assuming silence. Okay. <laughs> yes, I think people are ready. Okay, perfect. Okay, so now we have these motifs that are just kind of sitting there and they're not connected to each other. Um, so we're going to connect each one to its adjacent. So you get this kind of, uh, I guess, internal scallop, so to speak. Um, yeah, so let me show you what I mean. Okay, so from here to here, we're gonna come in. This is just a sketch line first. So I want you to sketch these lines. Are they, yeah, you can see them, right? Yeah. Like so, just connect them to the center because we're gonna have a little weave going on too. So from the bottom of the bud to the center of your, center of your autobah. Thank you very much, yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay. Now, just trying to think. Everybody's loving this design, Lorelai. Yeah, I noticed that. And this is just like the central rosette. Like it, it continues out. This is the one from, I showed in the, the presentation and also the first two slides. Uh, it's the same pattern. Um, 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 um. I'm just trying to think of how to explain the next part. Uh, I do know what's going on. <laughs> I'm just trying to think of how do I want to explain this. Okay, so there are, um, in a lot of different Islamic patterns, you have weaving that happens. Um, and some stems are going on top and some are going underneath. So we get this kind of in and out, in and out. So basically, you just gotta kind of put it in your head. This one isn't that complex actually compared to some like geo geometric ones, they're like double weave. And I just like, I'm very happy over here in the floral pattern side of <laughs> Islamic art. Um, so yeah, let's start. So basically you just choose one, doesn't matter which one. And whichever one you choose that goes up, the next one goes under. That should be simple enough. So this one is gonna go under. So I'm gonna kind of fatten up that line. This is the best time to get your erasers out. I'm going to erase that line on top. And then it's going to connect under. Now my next one over here is going over because my last not my little sorry because my last one was under. Like so. Okay, and then you just erase that part. Got a very positive compliment here. It says, yeah, I yeah, thank you very much, uh, Fakira. I mean, the point is to make sure that everyone can learn. So I, I do my best to make sure. Uh, so um, somebody's just asked for clarification. Shazia, the Autobah are the ones on the, on the diagonal lines. Uh, the buds are on the horizontal and vertical. So this one is over, which means this one is under. So I'm already gonna go over to this ortaba here on the diagonal. I'm gonna erase it and then over like that. 
This one, it's going to be over because this one was under. So this one is going like so. And then I'm going to erase. What did I say it was? Over. This one was over, which means this one is under. And that one looks like it can kind of stay like that. Let's make this a little thicker. So, like so. This one is over. I remember one time I was working on a geometric pattern and I had gone through all of this over, under, over, under, and I get to the end and both of them are the same. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> yeah. I just about pull. lost my yeah. absolute composure. <laughs> so this one's over, this one is under. And then we have one more. And this one is under, which means this one is over. And look at that, we are in business. We're good to go. Okay, so. We have one minute left, but that's not going to work. We just have a few leaves to add. Okay, just a few leaves to add, just in these little areas that are in between the motifs. You can add kind of a like a snail. That's kind of what it's called in Turkish, or a hugging bug. Um, so just in these empty areas, I'm adding a little leaf. Check it out, it's done. Looks gorgeous. Yeah, it's wonderful. All right, so um, I'm going to talk, but leave the page uh, spotlighted for, for this for a little while. I will. There's just one question. Somebody said, is it possible just to move the drawing to the left? Just because it's on not. It's right on my... Oh, it's on it's the edge. Okay. Yeah. I'll That's why what, I tried to adjust this a bit. It's all right. I'm going to take a screenshot for this person. Don't worry. And I'll send it to them. No problem. Okay. So, um... I'm going to put together the email address and send that out to everyone. I'm gonna decide how I'm gonna do it. I don't know if I'm gonna do it on the last class or if I'm gonna do it tomorrow. I'm gonna to speak with Leighton House and, and see what they think the best idea is. We don't wanna spam your inbox, obviously. Um, for the time being, share on social media. Um, I know last week I said to send to my email inbox and I really did love it. But at the same time, I need to see some important emails. Um, I'll just mention quickly, I'm putting together uh, a crowdfunding for the self-publishing of the book that I'm writing right now called Surface Patterns. Um, so basically all of the handouts I've been doing, I have turning, I've been taking those illustrations and turning those into content for a book based on um all the surface patterns from across the islamic world so from west africa to indonesia uh, so i need a lot of uh help i don't just mean financial by the way i just mean in terms of sanity um so um when i get all of that stuff together uh hopefully you guys will be interested and in, and help me in in whatever way you can that'd be wonderful um, but, you know, taking these classes and sharing the, the stuff that you do with these classes helps a lot. And uh, so if you feel like you would like to share on social media, if you have social media, please don't forget to tag us, me and Leighton House. Um, I promise to share them with everyone who follows me as well. Uh, and thank you all for 
Um, oh, thank you, Jihan. I didn't realize you had my uh, my first book. Um, yeah, the I have to say the layout wasn't me. It was the designer. <laughs> I can't take credit for that. But um, my book is called, uh, <laughs> what is it called? Islamic Art and Architecture. Oh boy, one second. <laughs> Hello. This is bad. This is bad. Here we go. That's not going to help. Memories of Seljuk and Ottoman masterpieces. So I did the writing, illustration, and some of the uh, photography. And then you can see. I've actually I have a class that teaches um, that teaches this online, and I'll tell you guys in my last class. Uh, I'll stay a little bit later, and I'll tell you about some of the classes I have taught and that are on my website for purchase, and then some upcoming classes um, that I'm going to do in the new year. Here's some different. So yeah, here's some. I'm trying to show you some of my illustrations, but it's hard because I only have so much space. Here's some of the layout that Jahan was talking about. All right. So thank you again for a really lovely evening. Um, let me change. Um, Hang on a second, there's just one. I just don't cut me off because I'm just going back on somebody else's question that I've lost. Hold on. <laughs> no problem. A signed copy? That's really difficult. <laughs> You're going to have to come to me. <laughs> oh, Lynn, you didn't have a compass. Yeah, a compass is necessary, definitely. Okay. All right. What's the question you're looking for, Sarah? It's all right. I've got it. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. All right. So uh, we'll get all of that information out to you. Have a wonderful week recreating um, all of these patterns. I'm really looking forward to seeing them. And I will see you next week. And I see my wonderful art teacher. I know she sent me the message privately. Um, but yeah, I will see you next week as well. Uh, Mrs. Van Rees, I can't call her by her first name. <laughs> <laughs> I know it sounds bad. <laughs> But, um, but yeah, thank you Mark all very much. Respect. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, and yeah, so next week is going to be wonderful. We're going to be doing a plate design that is Damascene inspired, but also inspired by some of the ones um, inside Leighton House's collection. So we're going to have a great time. All right. So have a wonderful evening and I'll see you guys next week. There's one person who's asked to see Henry before they go. <laughs> Hang on, just stay one second. Stay there one second. There you go. Here we go. Here we go. I've spotlighted him. <laughs> okay, you've got your 15 Sorry, minutes. Of show. He's not very happy. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. There we go. Come on. All right. I'll stop recording. All right, everyone. See you later.